Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for still following me on my journey. And the uh, journey is going to slow down a little bit because of the uh, challenges with uh, shipments from China. You know, the extended New Year, which is basically over a month long by the time it ends. And then the suspension of flights to China is certainly going to minimize the uh, transit opportunities for anybody shipping from China to the United States. So I'm going to hopefully have enough pens to last me until I can finally receive some of the pens that I ordered uh, just before the New Year's. This is a pen I talked about in my uh, January pens. It's a Calliard's Ego and it's the Ego 3. It came in these nice metal boxes and also when you do the auction, they normally label the colors um, alphabetically. So I bought color B and color E. Let's just take B out of its box so you can see how it was delivered. I did get an extra spare nib with uh, the pen. And I swapped nibs. So this is the nib that was originally in the pen. And interesting uh, felt pen sleeve. I think it's very functional, very useful. And it's a little bit different than some of the other pen sleeves that we've gotten. And it fits well inside that metal box and protects the pen from shipment. So here's the B color. You know, my first impression of this pen is I expected a little bit more for the price. It's priced more than previous Calliard Ego pens, um, um, double, about. And there's nothing particularly wrong with it. It just doesn't have a feel to it. So, you know, I'm using comparisons, the Full 0.017, the Moon Man M8, the Moon Man C1, which feel substantial and are about the same price, give or take a few dollars. So the cap comes off with about one and three quarter turns, which is below my two turn maximum. And we see the pen, and that's the replacement nib that I put in this one, which is uh, all silver. I think this is more of a fine to medium, and the other nib is more of a extra fine to fine. Interesting resin. Um, I would say I expected more, but then uh, you need to not really have a lot of expectations and Photography of a pen is certainly different than actually having it in your hand and looking at it. And we're going to explore this resin in more detail compared to some pens which I think are comparable. So that's number B color. And as we pop open number E color. And again the spare nib. And this is the spare nib that is actually a spare nib and not the one that came with the pen. We'll push out the pen and we'll see the color E, which in first glance, I, I like this uh, resin a lot nicer than the other one. It's just my personal preferences. You know, that uh, cap band is nicely engraved with Cali Arts. I think it's good to have some type of branding on the outside of the pen, cap band, clip, barrel, whatever they want to use, I think it's good. Now this should be the same one and three quarter turns, which it is. And we see that two-tone nib, which is not my favorite from a design element. It looks just a little strange, and I, I just not a fan of the iridium marketing that's done. Interesting uh, logo there. Looks like a, the head of a chicken. Hopefully you can, there we go, hopefully you can see it. So, that's where we're at. These are cartridge converters, and they have that spring in, which I'm not a fan of. And I may take these apart and take that spring out, because it doesn't really do much to keep the ink agitated and keep it in contact with uh, <clears throat> the section. And what I found is, is when you try to change inks in a pen, that spring just retains a lot of ink. You can't really push all the ink out, so I'm not a fan of that spring at all. 
I appreciate uh, the viewers asking a lot of questions about nibs and feeds and nib assemblies and things. So I disassembled the CaliArts Ego 3. It is a screw in uh, nib assembly, and they did send me some extra nibs. It's kind of like extra fine and fine, or, you know, fine and fine medium. And it is a nice, good size uh, number six nib. 35 millimeters in length as uh, the Chinese like to refer to it as and the other thing that's nice is the nib assembly is exactly the same nib assembly that Moon Man uses for their number six nib so that's really great so I love the Moon Man uh, fine nib that writes more like a fine medium really smooth good ink flow so obviously if I'm not happy with the nib that came with the Cali Arts it's easy to just swap in a Moon Man nib yeah just your basic plastic feed has a flat bottom to it which keys into the nib assembly so when you uh, put everything back together again it uh, fits very nicely so these are the two nibs that I got uh, this uh, two-tone one is the one that they seem to show in most of the um, auctions for this pen and the uh, that o-ring there is kind of missing and not missing you know in, in my feeling the moon man uh, nib assembly o-ring here and also an o-ring here at the top just above the threads you can see there's a groove there to take it in thankfully i got a ton of uh, nice o-rings that i can use like that little uh, smiley uh, frown face on the uh, moon man breather hole the converter pulled apart very easily this uh, metal ring is just a pressure fit to that back of the converter and I've uh, removed a number of uh, springs and this will add to my bag of spare springs don't know what I'll ever do with them but I don't like throwing anything away before I reassemble it I'll silicone grease the piston the pistons uh, area here that goes in so it just works very smoothly and seals very well so what pens would I compare the Ego 3 to? So I selected these two uh, Nemocene Singularity pens because they have similar resin and I think they have a similar style. And they were originally, these were originally priced in the same price range as the Cali Arts, you know, in the mid $20 range. And here's the Pen BBS 352, which to me is superior to all of these pens from a writing experience build you got a lot of resin choices look feel in the hand etc etc so these Nemo scenes I'm pretty certain are turned acrylics I would say if, if the acrylic in the pen BBS pen is an 8 out of 10 the Cali Arts is like a 6 out of 10, and the Nemo Scene Singularities is like a 5 out of 10. So these are, I think, close together in quality and, and, and look and feel. But the Pen BBS, I still think, from a turned resin pen for a price is, is an unbelievable value. And it's worth looking into if, if this type of design appeals to you. So there is a subtle design element that they've put into the Ego 3. So a little grooved line here, I guess to kind of simulate a blind cap or I don't know what, but it matches a similar groove in the cap here, which simulates the fact that this might be a finial that unscrews, but that's not the case. But it's interesting that they put in that little design element into this pen. Let's look inside the cap. After spending more time with the pen, I also noticed two more grooves, one at the bottom of the cap right above the cap ring and one at the bottom of the barrel above the threads. So it's interesting that they went to that trouble of putting that, that groove in there. Not necessarily know why uh, from a design perspective, you know, it's kind of... Uh, blot to me so a lot of these resins take on a different look based on lighting all what I have now coming in is indirect sunlight I've turned off my LEDs so that provides a, a different look 
Yes, I do enjoy the fact that the section is made out of the same material as the body and cap. When we look inside the cap, we'll notice a nice plastic cap liner. It looks like a one-piece liner. Should seal that uh, nib up fairly well. So that's a, a nice feature in the design of this pen. I think it's time for some LED x-ray. Interesting how it reveals inside the resins. The swirl one has a lot of uh, fairly transparent areas. What's not colored is, is transparent. The cracked ice one is really more semi-transparent. There's nothing really totally transparent, but there is a fair amount of transparency in both of these resins, which is kind of nice. Again, I seem to feel a little bit differently about them the more I use them. Now I have a little bit of different color. I have some muted sunlight coming in. So let's see how that shows off these resins. I have to admit that over time I appreciate these resins a little bit more, but Pen BBS has spoiled me. So what motivated me to buy the Ego 3? Number one, new model from Cali Arts. I enjoyed the other models and I wanted to see what they did to the pen to feel it warranted a large increase in price. And I was motivated by the quality of the live in you pens and this is the one that I got here I think it's the mountain series you know this is a beautiful turned acrylic a lot of colors in there as we get the camera to focus on it this has your Schmidt nib the quality wise I thought was good but the engineering wise this this unscrews you know there's a metal sleeve in here to hold the nib assembly in place and it's a Schmidt nib and, and I'm not Spit nibs have never really excited me. And this pen was north of 70 US dollars. But these resins that CaliArt used are not anywhere near the same league as the Live and You resins, Live and You resins. Uh, the way it's put together material wise and everything else, it's just not in the same league. So if you compare this $70 pen to the $25 pen, yes, the difference between these two. I think are justified. I think the Live and You pens are on the high end of, of what I would think is um, the range of pens of that quality and that nature, especially from China, especially if you compare it to the M600 and, and other types of pens that are around there and the new uh, Moonman M800. So that's what motivated me. So here's my CaliArts Ego family. The Model 3 is here at the bottom, the two that I just recently received. Here is the Ego 1, or the first one that they released, which I still think design-wise is a great pen. As you can see, it's not inked up and has not been inked up for a while. I love that clip design. It had a number 5 nib in it. Nice clear feed. Um, just a a nice pen and then they came out with uh, the two model where they changed the design of the clip and made it more common design you know still nice and very functional and everything else but uh, I like the other one better it's funkier they have that same nice rud piston here which I think is really a cool idea I got the one with the red ends it comes in different colors these are still available on eBay, and the price is, is excellent considering the quality of the pen. And then I saw this color come out, and I said, gee, let me get this one. And it's just a unique color and look. Same piston feed mechanism. So one of the thoughts that comes to mind is, why are these cartridge converter pens almost three times the price of these piston pens? I think these are turned acrylic. I would be pretty certain of it because of the nature of the look of the pen. It's hard to get the kind of like cracked ice design here or this nice mosaic design here. 
in a uh, injection molded material and these are all injection molded pieces so the price of making those items is considerably less material cost and these are turned by a lathe it's a computer driven lathe and there may not be much human intervention into it but there's more you know work developed in there but these are difficult to assemble they have more moving parts you know these are using a classic converter they're, they're probably paying 20 25 cents for in china these have nice uh, gold trim these are rhodium so there may be a little bit of difference but in most of the time when you look at pens that offer either a rhodium slash silver trim or a gold plated trim they're generally the same price you don't see a lot of difference in them these have a number six size nib they have a moon man nib assembly so these just have your common number five nibs with that you know you can swap nibs pull out the feeds whatever that's easy to do so at the end of the day i have to admit that these have not excited me as much and don't provide the value that these other versions the earlier models of the cali art ego did so what ink to put in i decided we're going to use the same ink in both pens so we're going to use robert oster deep c and i do love this ink i had a 50 milliliter bottle or a 30 milliliter bottle and now i bought a 100 milliliter bottle from um, ink art dot ink look at the color card it's a nice deep blue green deep sea i think is the appropriate name for this ink Looking at chromatography, we'll see that it is a combination of green and blue. But when I noticed, when I looked at this, I said this looks similar to other inks. So let's take a look at some other Robert Oster inks that are in this same family. So here's a sampling of inks from Robert Oster I would put into the blue-green family. Great Southern Ocean, $10 Teal, and Tranquility. I also could put their turquoise ink in here uh, but what you see in all the chromatography is the top line is a nice deep blue varies a little bit in intensity and distance and also various green is in all of these except for great southern ocean which has just a little bit of green here but also some pink and the color cards show and also a pretty good variety and range but to me, you can do as much analysis on ink as you want, but what really matters is when you put it in a pen and see how that nib lays down the ink on the paper that you're writing on. And we're going to do that. The pen feels good in the hand. It's fairly light. We'll give you those weights. And to put things in perspective, post it, it just becomes, to me, too long. And it back weights the pen. It's still usable but certainly not as comfortable as it is unposted. And the length, I think, would work with most people's hands. The section is okay. A little on the small side will give you those dimensions. Now it's time for nib on paper. I certainly like this fine nib better. You know, it says it says 22k GP, but obviously that's stamped in there. And this is a just a plain steel nib, but it is much smoother than the fine nib that came with the pen, the two-tone nib. And I enjoy writing with it. It's not quite to the same level as a pen bbs or moon man number six nib but it's certainly nicer than that two-tone fine nib so if i was to rate the pen 
With this replacement nib, I would give it an 8.9 with one check for look and one check for build. And if I was to rate this original extra fine nib, that really is the nib that seems to come with most of these pens, I would rate it an 8.2. Again, one check for the look and one check for the build, but a negative for the nib. And it just is not a pleasant writing experience. If this was the only nib that you experienced, I mean, it, it does work well as a fine. I mean, you can put down a really fine line with it. But to me, it's a little bit too much feedback. It's a little scratchy. I would smooth this out. Um, but again, we we're trying to write with the nib as I receive them. So how would I put these pens in comparison and, and would I recommend them? I would give them a mild recommendation. I mean, there's nothing particularly wrong with them, but I don't think they're representative of the price. To me, they're more like a $15 pen in the current market as I see it. Um, they are nice and, and it is a design that might appeal to a number of people. You know, gold trim instead of silver trim, flat tops, you know, a nice band, but nothing over the top, but just kind of a nice design. Feels good in the hand, but the writing experience is, is not great. It's not a $25 writing experience. So this is the first time I used the same uh, ink in two different nibs in the same pen. So it'd be interesting to see if that's something that um, you found interesting or informative or would help you make a decision on a pen that you might want to own. So thank you for watching. We've reached the end of, of this particular video. May you have many great writing experiences and hopefully dip your toe into the global market of pens. And there are many pens from around the world that are quite nice to write with and I think would bring a smile to your lips if you were using them. So this is the end for now. We're going to say bye until the next video. And we're at the bottom of the page. And this fine nib does work well with this ink.